that's I think that's what I liked about the script. I thought the you know it's it's not trying to simplify this. It's not yeah. there are no goodies and baddies here. Everybody is culpable, but everybody is also it's completely understandable. You know, and and you know the question of who do you want her to go with because you completely understand the love between her and her husband, but you completely understand not being able to deal with the weight of that grief and the weight of, of the idea of being in a long-term relationship and suddenly looking at your partner and realizing you're both strangers. And, and I think, you know, that's, that's one of the things in the script, like James has said, that I, I think every adult who's been through a couple of relationships that haven't worked, it is that moment where you look at your partner and you think, you're the person that I should know best in the world, and I don't know you, and you don't know me. And it's the moment for most adults that is the loneliest moment in your life. Mm. This is the story of how on earth do you try and rebuild that? How do you bridge that gap again? You know, and I think in that way, it's a very, very grown-up love story. Absolutely. And it really does sort of show the different ways in which people grieve and deal with it. And that being the thing that maybe separates her husband and brings her closer to the, another man is yeah. grief doesn't look one way. No, and I think it's easy. You know, I think the thing with Lubert, he's a, he's a widower. He understands the grief, but it's not a shared grief. Yeah. It's a very different thing, you know. And I think with, with Rachel and her husband, it's territory that is t so terrifying for both of them. And every time they look at each other, it reminds them of that that tear inside them. It's much easier to go with somebody who understands but doesn't share that tear yeah. mm. than it is to actually try and delve into it and, and, and move on, yeah. move forward. Yeah.